welcome to Love Connection. And you'll meet Eric. He says his old girlfriends come to him for dating advice. Which of these women did he choose? Which will our audience choose? Today on Love Connection, you'll find out and you'll hear everything that happened on their dates. Now, here's our host, Chuck Willery. Yeah. All righty, we're going to meet our next guest. Uh, he used to weigh 240 pounds. He'll ask a girl out by writing her a poem, and he says that one thing that turns him off is too much passion. Please welcome Eric Simmons. Seat. 240 pounds, Eric, you have definitely trimmed down. Yeah. What do you weigh left. now? What do you weigh? I weigh 197. Oh, you've almost 50 pounds. You've lost 45 pounds. Yeah. 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 Did you date a lot when you were heavy? Uh, not really, because, like, I was so big that when you'd walk up to a young lady and I'd ask her out, you could almost see it on her face. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> Didn't want to go out with So it, it turned me off a little bit. So. Yeah. What's wrong with passion? Well, if <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> well, on the first on the first date, if you if they let you just run reckless over them or just run any type of way all over them, then that kind of shows that they don't have that much respect for themselves. That's what's you know, wrong with passion. Well, because you know I don't mind it, you know, but like on the first date, I'm trying to get to know the person. I'm sure she's trying to get to know me, mm -hmm. and um, I would like to wait until. What if she's on. real passionate though? <laughs> What do you think if she's real passionate? What goes through your mind if a girl well, is really passionate with the other with any other guy. Uh -huh. Any other guy that I walks right into this thing, you know, she can easily do it with me. She can almost easily do it with someone else. Okay. All right. If she likes me that much, she'll wait. <laughs> okay. Earlier we heard that old girlfriends uh, often come to you for advice, dating advice. Is that the kind of advice? Yeah, because I'm pretty mature for my age. You know, I take care of my sister's kids and my grandmother, and I own my own home. I have a lot of responsibilities. How old are you? 23. Gee, that's quite an accomplishment for a 23-year-old, if I do say so myself. Well, my grandmother's kept me in line. She's kind of my overseer in some yeah. ways. You have a lot of respect for her. A great deal yeah. of respect. Good. Okay. Let's take a look at the women that Eric had to choose from. Remember that you're going to pick the woman that you think's best for him. Okay, here they come. First it was Deidre. She, uh, she's originally from New York City. She meets most of her dates at the beach. She dates about three times a month, but she doesn't like playing the field. Here's more on that subject. I like to deal with one person because I can give all of myself to just one person. If you're spreading yourself out, you're very thin. And they can't, no one can get all of you or know exactly what you're like because you're so busy trying to keep up with this John, Mike, or whoever else. Okay, and the next, uh, next was Odette. She was raised in Oakland. She describes herself as tall and willowy. And the first thing she notices in a manner is thighs. Let's hear more from Odette. <laughs> Conceit is one thing. But an arrogance that, you know, very self-assured, masculine, haughty, you know, that's a definite turn-on. But it has to, you know, be up to a point, not through to the core. I don't want a man who's so totally arrogant that, you know, he really can't get along with someone else. All right, finally you watch Lisa. She likes to cook and sew. She thinks she's a little too trusting and usually attracts the wrong kind of man. But here's the kind of man that she prefers. I want someone who to, to keep in contact with me, whether, whether by coming to see me or by phone conversations. I would like someone to even show or express their feelings or how they feel towards me by sending me flowers every now and then. There's no romantics out there anymore. At least I haven't come across any. Uh, Eric selected one of those women as his date. We're going to show you all three women again before you vote. First there was Deidre. She's 23. and She's a student. Then Odette. She works for a stockbroker and she's 21. Finally, Lisa, she's 23, and she's a secretary. Okay, audience, time for your voting machines. Please make your choice now. Who do you think's the best lady for Eric? <laughs> we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to meet the woman that Eric selected and hear everything that happened on that date. We'll do that in two minutes and two seconds. Be right back. Later. All right, we're back, and Eric's going to tell us who he selected. Eric? I went over to Odette. Odette! <laughs> Eric and Odette haven't seen each other. We always hear from both sides, so let's say hello to Odette Givens. Hi, Odette. Hi, Eric. How are you? Hi, Chuck. I'm fine, thanks. Odette, why don't, uh, why don't you tell us about the date? 
he picked me up, and I live in a security building, so I had to buzz him in. And when I went downstairs to open the door for him, I was dismayed. Dismayed? Yeah. Why? He was, he, he looked like a little boy. He was very tall, you know, masculine, but yet he was very youthful. Um, well, how old are you? I'm only 21. Oh, he's two years older than you are, okay. <laughs> right. And um, after we, you know, I, I asked him into the apartment for a glass of wine. You know, he was, he, he seemed like he was very shy. How did Odette seem to you in person? Well, in a way, I felt like she kind of wanted to wear the pants during the date. Did you? <laughs> yeah, because when we were leaving the apartment, she was, um, her and her girlfriend were walking to another apartment, I think it's to the manager's apartment, and I was, like, sort of trailing behind. It kind of made me feel kind of, uh-oh, what am I doing here? Like, Mommy's ahead of me, and I'm walking behind her. Well, wait a minute. Let me ask you this now. Did you, uh, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth, I'm just trying to get the picture straight for everybody, Odette included. Did they kind of talk with each other and, and exclude you? Is that what happened? And oh, no, what happened on when she said, ready to go? Okay, and then her girlfriend was already outside the door. Uh -huh. And then Odette walked in front of me. I gave her the lead. And then they both walked like side by side each other really quickly down the hallway and I was running the heap up from, from behind. So the impression that you got was that you were being kind of had a yeah. trail line. Okay. All right. So what happened next? Well, we got down to the car and we were driving uh, to the restaurant. He had decided to take me to a French restaurant. I love French food. Um, in the car on the way to the date, he was, he was very quiet and I was a little bit nervous, you know, about the silence. So I started talking a lot. I, I felt that I was running off at the mouth. We were very quiet, and so I stopped talking, and I excused my silence by saying that I'm, you know, basically a quiet person, feeling that this would be, an, you know, an opportune time for him to speak up and tell me a little bit more about himself. I kept trying to speak, you know, say something, and um, I would only get one or two or three word replies if I was lucky, and I, I was kind of dismayed about it. I said, boy, she's really making it hard for me to carry on a conversation. She didn't seem like she wanted to spread it across too much. Isn't this funny? You're both getting the same opinion of each other, and yet you're doing the same thing to each no, other. I was That's pretty talkative. Really I was talking and uh, <laughs> trying to get across certain things, trying to get ideas on what we could really have a conversation with. But it was like she wasn't giving much effort. Okay. All right. What happened next? So you're in the French restaurant. Did you enjoy the meal? Well, the, the meal was good, but when we first got to the restaurant, we were a little bit early, so we had to sit out into the courtyard and uh, wait for our table. And we were, you know, we were speaking about different things, but it seemed that, that, that the main topic of conversation were the uh, fluorescent bug killers that were <laughs> hanging from the trees around us. Did you ever feel like you'd opened up? Well, a little bit. It was like when we were getting out of the car. I opened up my side and I was coming around to open her door and she quickly jumped out and said that I hope you don't feel offended by uh, me jumping out like that, but I'm this liberated woman and I like to open and close my own doors. That's right. And that entire evening was like she was always a couple of inches ahead of me and I always felt like I was following mommy. Did yeah. you want to do anything after dinner, Eric? Uh, yes, I did. I wanted to go dancing. I asked would she like to go dancing to the comedy show, to the beach, and also to a movie. Uh -huh. But uh, I had an excuse for every single one why she couldn't. Is that right? Not, not really. We were, um, while we were sitting at dinner and after the waitress had cleared away the place, he says, well, what do you want to do? And I felt very uncomfortable about having that question thrust upon me, so I turned it around and said, I don't know, what do you want to do? You know, I prefer for the man to make the decisions, and him giving me the opportunity to tell him what I wanted to do, well, I just felt a little bit uncomfortable about that. How did this date end? Well, it ended, um, I was driving up to her apartment, and, um, I said, would you, like to walk me to the, would you like me to walk you to the door? She said, that depends on which door. And I wasn't going to text that. I said, leave it alone. So we walked to her apartment, and she opened the door, and she said, oh, everybody's asleep. And um, I said, well, I had a really nice time with you, and I gave her a good hug, a hug good night. I see. Okay. Well, let's take a look and see who the audience picked for you. The audience picked Lisa. Picked Lisa. Well, if you want to take our audience's advice and uh, go out with Lisa, we'd be happy to pay for that date. That's how it works here. I'd like to go out with Lisa. Would you? Yes. Okay. Right. Well, Odette, it sounds like you all made a real stab in the dark there, but just couldn't quite make a connection of any kind. Well, That's maybe we can play tennis one time. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry things didn't work out as far as a love connection, but it sounds like you had a nice dinner anyway. Oh, I did. It and a good time, and hopefully we'll see you again.
I hope we see you too. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot for bye coming bye. on the show. Bye bye. Thank you. Eric, you're going to go out with, uh, what was her name? Lisa. Lisa, yes, Eric remembers. We're going to go out with Lisa and hope you have a good time with her. Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe this will be a little bit different. Hope so. All right. We're going to, no, oh, that's it. That's it. That's our show for today. So we're going to be back tomorrow with more singles trying to make a love connection. Didn't do it this time, but sometimes it doesn't always work. Sometimes it does. I'm Chuck Woolery. We'll see you then. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> If you're single and outgoing, if you live in this area and want to appear on our show, call 213-659-6210. Some guests on Love Connection will receive the following. Presto's electric shoe polisher to keep shoes looking like new. Polishes and buffs in one easy operation for a perfect shine every time from Presto. Or Jonathan Martin dresses in sports for now in silks, linens, and other naturals for that custom tailor that looks no one dresses a woman like Jonathan Martin. Our dinner is wonderful with rice alone is long grain and wild rice, the special San Francisco treat that adds a gourmet touch to any meal. Our soft soap, liquid soap, now available in holiday designs. Soft soap, where beauty and softness go hand in hand. Our four gallons of super scrubber with two tests, easy care, latex, flat wall, and trim finish, good for both walls and woodwork, sold only by True Value Hardware Stores. Ice Cube, smooth, delicious chocolatey candy. Now also in mint flavor. Buy by the Beast Bar Family Pack. Ice Cubes are good and chocolatey. For Love Connection, this is Rod Roddy. SCTV screenwriter Soapy Maxwell will show how life imitates art on tonight's show, 11 p.m., on Next, The Dating Game.